Tuesday is Election Day for people living in the Albuquerque, New Mexico metro area. Four candidates are on the ballot for the state's first congressional district, with Democrat Melanie Stansbury seen as the favorite heading into Election Day. They are looking to fill the seat left vacant by Deb Holland. She left Congress after being confirmed as Secretary of the Interior. For more, I'm joined by Morgan Lee. Morgan is the Santa Fe correspondent for the Associated Press, and he took a closer look at this race in his article, Special House Election Measures Political Pulse After Trump. Morgan, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. So you point out that New Mexico's first congressional district has long favored Democrats. What have you been seeing in the run-up to this election that makes you think that the race could be tighter than people think? Sure, it's a it's an unpredictable race because it was just sprung on voters in the last couple months since President Biden um, uh, recruited Deb Haaland away from her seat. There was no primary vote. The the party central committees picked their candidates, and um, and in in some ways the the Democratic and and Republican candidates they're both state legislators who are seasoned campaigners. Um, it's sort of uh, uh, an even match in a lot of ways. Um, Democrats do have an advantage in terms of fundraising. Uh, Melanie Stansbury um, also uh, has the advantage of, uh, of, of an advantage in terms of Democratic registration. Um, and we've seen some of that in early turnout. Republicans, they used to hold this seat. And uh, the last two times there's been a vacancy election, um, they... Uh, they took that in Congress, both in this district and in New Mexico's northern district. Well, special elections outside of a normal election, you typically struggle to get a large voter turnout. What kind of turnout has there been during early voting? And could we see more people than expected show up on Election Day? So, yeah, leading into this, uh, Democrats turned out in big numbers, about 60 percent in early voting, both in person, absentee balloting. Um, so they seemed motivated ahead of time. Uh, the Secretary of State put out some initial numbers for in-person voting today at around 2 in the afternoon, and it was a little more even, but still there's more, a little more um, participation at that point from registered Democrats. There's also a wild card in this race. There's a libertarian candidate, and there's an independent candidate who's held statewide uh, office before, um, and this is... Uh, you know, there's about almost 10 percent participation by people who are unaffiliated with uh, the two major parties. And this is in the state that brought you um, that brought us libertarian presidential candidate Gary Johnson in the past. So there is uh, there are strong mm -hmm. currents uh, of libertarian voter trends that could steal some votes away from the major candidates and, and make it less predictable. Well, so looking at the broader picture, Morgan, of Congress, is a win in this special election more important for Democrats or Republicans? Well, Democrats have a lot to lose here. Uh, uh, they have held this district uh, since 2009. Uh, they've used it as a springboard. Uh, the governor uh, of New Mexico, Michelle Lujan Grisham, held this district before she was elected governor in 2018. And uh, before that, it was uh, Martin Heinrich, who is now in the Senate. Um, and uh, the Republicans uh, in 2020, they flipped back uh, the southern New Mexico district uh, that was held by Democrats for two years. Uh, for them, this would be an enormous coup to, to take back this, this district, which has been trending Democrat over the last decade. Um, and in the legislature, Democrats have picked up seats in this area. Um, so I think it would be uh, pretty stunning for them if, if, if they didn't walk away with victory. Yeah, I mean, as you noted in your piece, it, it shows you sort of the stakes to see that the second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, was deployed there, right, to um, campaign on behalf of, of Melanie Stansbury, the Democrat. So that indicates, obviously, how much importance Democrats are placing on this uh, contest. Finally, why are people looking at this election as an important indicator heading into the 2022 midterms? Sure, this is a seat where... Um it's a, 
it's New Mexico's sort of central district. Um, it's an area that has heavy Hispanic representation. Uh, people are looking at, at it uh, in terms of um, how the Biden administration, their policies may resonate in terms of border control, in terms of uh, relief efforts, um, and in terms of the package that Democrats are pushing uh, for climate change and for infrastructure spending. Um, Melanie Stansbury really hitched her campaign closely to uh, President Biden, to Congress, what they're trying to do in terms of infrastructure, in terms of economic relief, in terms of rebooting the economy. Um, so the way that plays here, um, you know, could it gives us a few tea leaves going into 2022. And um, there's uh, just there's a string of um, vacancies. There's five vacancies now in Congress. This is uh, the first of those where you get an idea what voters are thinking uh, post Trump, uh, you know, almost six months into the Biden administration. Uh, so it, it, it could be just kind of a really interesting uh, temperature check on political sentiments in a, in a middle American city uh, that also happens to have um, a diverse, heavily Latino population. Um, so those are some of the things you know, people can learn uh, when the polls close here this evening. Right. I, I mean, because as you note also in your piece, there are uh, many socially conservative Latinos who may be um, more likely to kind of see a Republican message or a Republican candidate's message resonate. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. We are certainly watching closely. Morgan Lee for us. Morgan, thank you very much. Thank you.